What should I brew? Stop the tape again. Before I brew, I need to... I've been in the pool industry since 1993, so I'm a bit of a water chemistry nerd. But it wasn't until I heard from Brewlosophy about how much water chemistry impacted beer flavor. And that's when I started taking things seriously. For instance, I want my East Coast IPAs to have a softer mouthfeel, so I'll increase the chloride and lower the sulfate levels. On the other hand, I want my West Coast IPAs to have a crisper mouthfeel, so I'll increase the sulfate and lower the chloride levels. That's just the basics. It's obviously a lot more complex than that, but first we have to know where our water source is coming from. I have three choices for source water. Tap water is the easiest water for me to get. I can get it anywhere in my house, but I have to filter out the chlorine. I could just use spring water and avoid filtering altogether. Now the downside with using either tap water or spring water is that I have to get it tested frequently because with my tap water, things can change. So I test my water in three different ways. First, I'll just ask my town if they'll send me a water report, but not every town's gonna do that. The other thing I can do is ask my friends in the pool industry if they have a water testing kit specifically made for home brewers, but I still want more data. So my favorite way to test my water is to send a water sample to Ward Labs and I wanna make sure that I always have the most accurate test. Now I could avoid doing all of that and just use distilled water because distilled water has zero minerals in it. But every time that I wanna brew, I have to go and buy bottles of distilled water and they're kind of a bitch to carry. So instead, I decided to use reverse osmosis or RO water in my brewery because it's basically like using distilled water, but I can actually make it right here in the brewery. However, it does require a system for making it, and here's how that works. The first stage of the RO system is a simple pleated filter that you find in any pool filter, really, that removes silt and sediment from the source water. The next stage is a green coconut carbon filter that removes chlorine and other toxins. And finally, it passes through a reverse osmosis membrane that removes all total dissolved solids. Now there's one big downside to using reverse osmosis water, which is for every gallon of water, pure H2O reverse osmosis water that you wanna make, you are going to waste one gallon of water to make it. But since I'm not using it to clean and I'm only using it to actually make the beer, I'm okay with it. So with that said, let's build an RO system in the brewery. Right now, it's currently filling the reservoir, which I'll show you in a second. And, well, no, I'll show you right now. This is the RO system. I have attached it to the wall. Clean water line, blue goes to the reservoir. For the black wastewater line, I did red, so it's one to one. So for every gallon of RO water, you get one gallon of wastewater. The wastewater line is just coming right directly down here into the sink a slow trickle. The blue line is coming behind the sink and then into here, which there's a little float valve. And when it fills up to where it needs to fill up, it should float and stop the filling. So that's filling up. There's this blue PEX line, it's like a straw that comes up, up the lid. So the PEX line goes elbow, elbow, down into this pump here. The other side goes up, another PEX line straight up over and into the pot filler. All right, Let's see if this works. Okay, now that we, now that we, 
have our starting um, RO water profile. We're starting from absolute scratch, and now we just have to use it to brew. So I'm gonna be using Brew Father on my computer to dial in my water chemistry for a batch of beer. So let's go to the computer. Okay, so we're in Brew Father right now. And before we get started making any recipes, we need to set up our water profiles. So we're gonna go over here to profiles and click on water. Now we have three different source water profiles. So to get these measurements for my home water, I actually sent a water sample in that's been filtered to Ward Labs and here's those results. So what I do simply is just type those numbers into home. So I just make sure all of these are set, I hit save and that becomes my home source water profile. Now. Reverse osmosis water should be zero across the board, but I wasn't 100% sure about that because it was a brand new system. And so what I did was I ordered another test kit from Ward Labs and I ran my regular home water through the reverse osmosis system and I sent that in to Ward Labs and I got this. So I set up my reverse osmosis source water just like that. Distilled water is again, zero across the board. So we have our source waters set up in Brewfather, and then Brewfather comes with all of these targets. So you have your American Lager, your Balanced, Hoppy, Hoppy Light. It comes with, uh, I think, Hoppy uh, New England IPA. So I have my targets, and so this is all good to go. It's all you really need to do. So let's just go into a recipe. This is a pretty simple recipe. So uh, if we scroll down to the bottom, you can see I already have uh, water in here, but we're gonna redo this all. So here's all the way at the bottom, the water profile, and we're just gonna hit this calculator button. And so we know what our grains are, we have our volumes, and so we need to check and change our source water. So in this case, I have it set to home, but we're gonna change it over to reverse osmosis, and we're gonna hit save. Okay, so for our target profile, I'm choosing that pillowy New England IPA that uh, is in here, but let's just make sure that that's correct. Let's go, let's just do Hoppy New England IPA. So now we have our source water and we have our target. What's cool about Brewfather is I can basically just hit this button, this auto button, and it will automatically give me all of the salt additions that I need to add to my mash water. And since I kind of uh, use, I have one big container for mash and sparge water together, so I don't need a separate sparge addition. I can turn that off, and I don't really do any acid additions uh, because it usually comes out pretty well for me. So I'm gonna hit auto again just to make sure. And then what you can do is save those adjustments to the recipe. So once that's done, you can go back up here and we can see under this tab, this has changed now. We now only have to add 10.6 grams of calcium chloride, 3.7 grams of Epsom salt, and 3.7 grams of gypsum. And that is to nine, almost 10 gallons of water. And so that's really it. It gives you exactly what you need to add and then you can go and make your beer. That was fun. So with all that, we got some pure H2O, some reverse osmosis water. Now all we have to do is turn it into beer. Wow, perfect. I guess uh, I'll show you how I made this in the next video.